Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn how to calculate the entropy of a reaction. But first I wanted to go over standard states. So whenever you see this degree symbol here, and that just means you're working under standard conditions. And so if you have gases, then that means the pure gas is at one atmosphere. If you're working with liquids or solids, you're still working at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. And if you're working with solutions, then the concentration is one molar. Now since entropy is a state function, remember it doesn't depend on how it gets there. We only are worried about the initial and final conditions. And so if we're thinking about the system, which is our reaction, then all we care about is the entropy of the products minus the entropy of the reactants. We do need to take into account the number of moles of each reactant and product. So the formula for calculating the entropy of the reaction is equal to the sum of the moles of the products multiply their molar entropies minus reactants. But remember, you need the moles of the reactants times their molar entropies. Now, these molar entropies for each species are all located in the back of your textbook, um, in the appendix. This is all literature. And on an assessment, I would have to provide them for you within the context of the problem. And so it's just important for you to remember this formula here to calculate the entropy of the reaction. Remember, the reaction is our system. And unlike enthalpy, back in first semester general chemistry, you, weren't, you would have learned about enthalpy, and it's a state function. You can do products minus reactants, and you would looked up the enthalpy of formation for the individual species. Now, for pure elements and their most natural state. It's zero for enthalpy, and we'll also learn it's zero for Gibbs free energy later on in their standard states. However, for entropy, standard entropies are always non zero. at 25 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> we would need to have a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin um, in order to have something that would theoretically have zero amount of entropy. So everything will have entropy that you're working with here. We're gonna be working mainly at 25 degrees Celsius for a lot of these calculations. Um, but with enthalpy, if you're working with some sort of pure element, and we'll see that later on um, in a future video, then sometimes you're not provided the enthalpies of formation because um, that particular element is pure in its natural state, and so it's just assumed to be zero for enthalpy and Gibbs free energy. And like I said, we'll discuss that later on. So let's just go ahead and use the literature data of molar entropies to calculate the entropy of the reaction below. And so whenever I do thermodynamic calculations, I just like to organize everything in, in a table. And so the units here are joules per Kelvin mole. Um, whenever you look up the molar entropies. And so for nitrogen dioxide it is 240.1. So what I mean by making a table, I write the values directly underneath each species. Now, please, please be careful. Like some of the trickiest things that could happen here are that, for example, water is a liquid here, but you could find data for water acting as a gas. So please be mindful of the states of matter you're working with because that can change the thermodynamic 
um, constants for that particular molecule, okay? It's just word of caution there. So for water as a liquid, the entropy is 70. For nitric acid, it's 146. And for nitrogen monoxide, it's 210.8. And so I like to write them underneath. And then to calculate the entropy of the reaction, it's products minus reactants, but we have to take into account the stoichiometric coefficients. So once again, make sure you're working with the balanced equation because we're gonna take into account the stoichiometric coefficients here. And even if it's one, I write it down so that like when I'm doing other problems, I just don't forget that to include that. So products, so I'm gonna take two times 146 for the nitric acid. There's two moles of nitric acid at 146 plus one times 210.8. So this was the products. And as I've said before, these numbers came from the stoichiometric coefficients. Minus the reactants, so three times 240.1 for the nitrogen dioxide, plus one times 70 for the water. These are the reactants. In addition, we took into account the stoichiometric coefficients. So when we plug that into our calculator, we get negative 288 <clears throat> joules per Kelvin. And we ask ourselves, Does this answer make sense? Really, does this sign make sense, the fact that it's negative? Well, remember that the reaction is basically the system, and we've calculated in a previous video, um, not necessarily calculated, but, but predicted the sign for the entropy of the system by looking at the moles of the reactants versus the moles of the products on each side to see, like, did we get more disorder as we progressed through the reaction, or did we become more ordered? So for example, here, I have how many reactants? I have three plus one. I have four moles of reactants. And how many moles of products do I have? Good, you have three moles of products. And so the fact that you went from four to three means that you're creating more order, less disorder, right? And so having a negative sign, um, we expect the entropy to decrease um, as we see it going from four to three. And so a negative sign should make sense. If the sign was positive, that would imply that the reaction was getting more disorder as it progressed, okay? So we expect entropy to decrease. All right, in summary, we learned about standard states and the conditions that we're working in when we have this degree symbol implying standard state. We also learned that entropy is a state function, and so to calculate the entropy of a reaction, which we're most concerned about as chemists, to do products minus reactants, but always, always take into account the number of moles based on the balanced chemical equation and the stoichiometric coefficients. We also learned that standard entropies are always non-zero because usually we're working at 25 degrees Celsius, um, but remember enthalpy and later on Gibbs free energy are zero for elements in their standard states and like their most pure natural form there. And then we worked an example problem where we did see that we have a more ordered um, system here, more ordered reaction, and so that's the reason why the entropy of the reaction came out to be negative. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.